Uh, Mr. Harlan, thank you for meeting me here. Often meet with patients outside the clinic, Doc? Only under special circumstances. How long do I have? Well, I don't know. I still need to see the pathology reports. Right. But it's not good, is it? No, I'm afraid not. Don't warn me yet, Doctor. I've dodged many bullets in my life, some actually made of lead. Vietnam. Chicago. Well, I'll know more in a week when I see the lab results, but in the meantime, you may want to put your affairs in order. Settle your estate, fill your family and your loved ones. Let's talk about Plan B. Plan B? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. I think you do. What's the meaning of this? You're insane! One phone call from me, you can fire your nanny. I need a name! I swear, I don't know his name, that's the truth! I'll ask you one more time! It's a shop downtown. Oh, for God's sake. Fateful curiosities. Antonio. I swear, that's, that's all I know. Just go down to the shop, you'll find them there. It's on 45th Street. I want you to find a shop downtown on 45th called uh, Fateful Curiosities. See. Sarà fatto. Ed è bambini. Grazie, Dan. What I've read in the papers about you is true. You are some kind of monster. It's pronounced monster. Call me when my labs come in. Victor, don't tell me I sent you. Why not? Please, you owe me that much. <laughs> Good night, doctor. He'll already know your name. Talk to me. Ho chiuso molte persone a allora. ma lui non è umano. Trova qualcun altro. Speak English, dammit. God has forgiven me for what I do in my business. Those uh, things I do for you. But this man is not man. Killing this one 
will send us both to hell. I don't believe in hell. See what I am sending you. Then you decide. This man. Who is this? Yeah, I've got some vital time sensitive research I need done tonight. What time is it? I've sent Elizabeth over there with some materials for you to analyze. Don't let me down, Walquist. It was him again, wasn't it? Let's just go back to sleep. Really? I'm fucking believable. How is he today? Bit of a mood. Dr. Gideon's in with him now. Is it okay if I go on in? Sure. Gideon could use all the help he can get. Isabel, make him change my menu. I cannot eat this shit anymore. Sorry, Harry, but I need you on a strict diet. Fuck, if I gotta die, at least let me go after a few squares, eh? Harry. Mind the nurses. Do your treatments like a good boy. And maybe we can get you home soon. Hey, I'm an ex-cop. And your lion eyes are telling me that the only ride I'm taking out of here is in her purse. Damn it, Daddy. Ms. Winters, may I have a word with you, please? So, what's the real story? The hospital is withholding all treatment it legally can. Without insurance, he's just not a priority. This is bullshit. Yeah, perfectly legal bullshit, Miss Winters. It's out of my hands. What, what, what about research centers? Maybe some experimental treatments? Harry's cancer is common. My father is not common, doctor. I'll level with you, Isabel. Even with the best finance care, I couldn't save him. So you're just giving up? I am not a charitable organization. Medicine is a business like any other, and frankly, I have other patients to attend to who might have a better chance. I'm sorry. Other patients with money. I'll check in on Harry at the end of the week. I wish I could do more, but I can't. Good day, Miss Winters. American healthcare system. <laughs> Izzy, I've locked up folks with more ethics than some of these angels of mercy. They can't do this. Oh, who's dead? There's gotta be a better way. So what? Cheat death? It's not like you to just give up. I stared death down long ago, you know. I know. Every day for 35 years. No. In the flesh, I looked him right in the eye. And he stared back at me like, like through some funhouse mirror. Do we need to turn down your armor finger, Perry? He walks and he talks like a man. But everything he touches dies. A trail of corpses led right to his doorstep. catch up to it. I want to finally did. I couldn't touch him. It cost me my job.
come you never told me this before? I think you might be right about that morphine drip, Izzy. Yeah, I'll get the nurse. Isabel. Yes, Dan. We're gonna get through this. You should have graduated. It's my fault. Shh. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you, Izzy. You promised me that you'll go back as soon as I'm gone, okay? Hey, you're not going anywhere. Just rest up. And I'll be back in a bit. I have a one question. No, they're real, all right. Wait, couldn't they be altered or computer generated, photoshopped? I used a, a, a microscope to scrutinize pixel integrity. He was present when these images were taken. How old is this guy? What are we talking about, 500, 1,000 years? I'll bet he's a lot older than that. In 1906, over 3,000 people died in an earthquake and subsequent fire. The police chief at the time, a man named Clive Stoker had a run-in with your guy right before the fire. Then the earthquake and fire happened, wiping everything out. He wasn't much of a priority anymore. Stoker said he'd brought a hellish apocalypse down as retribution for the investigation. I took the liberty of doing some research into articles going several weeks after that, specifically obituaries. Police Chief Stoker. What happened to him? Where'd he go? England for a few years. Nobody ever went to a lot of trouble to try and follow him. Because he was scared. I <laughs> like this guy already. He booked passage to America on a ship in 1912. Guess which one? You gotta be kidding me. And you know the punchline is he never made it aboard Carpathia. What is that, in Russia? The first rescue ship. A surviving priest said Everhart sank Titanic, then cursed it. More than 1,500 people died in that one. Since then, he's photobombed newsreels and press images the world over. Uh, Titanic, Hindenburg, Auschwitz-Birkenau, war crimes executions, plane crashes. Well, hell, he was even at the Manson trial in L.A. Nobody reads your firewall push. Do you understand me? When can I expect payment to uh, ensure my continued discretion? I'll see to your payment, Mr. Walquist. Goodbye. Hey, baby. Yeah. Pack your bags. We are going on that vacation. Oh, yeah. He's gonna take real good care of me. Hey, the PhD. Is Solito? Si, El Solito. Don't 
you like me to accompany Mr. Harland? Sleep with no dreams. Wait here. I'll close my eyes. Remember our love and say goodbye. Don't send me flowers. Please don't cry. I'll sleep with no dreams <laughs> when it's my time. Hello? Hello? Welcome. I was told you provide a unique service in which I might be in great need. You look very tired. I'm not tired, sir. You should see a doctor. I have seen a doctor. And he sent you to me. I was asked for the passionately I might add, not to reveal the name of your benefactor. He seemed almost terrified that I might. Why is that? What the hell is this? No, what? No? Can we talk business? Perhaps I could interest you in a statue for your tombstone. That angel is one of my favorites. Better be willing to part with her under the right circumstances. You know why I'm here. I'm told you know everything. Not everything, Victor. I was told you could do that. Do what? You like to toy with people, don't you? <sighs> I don't want your advice. The price is quite dear, I'm afraid. Specifically designed to reflect what's most personal and precious to them. I assure you, sir, finances will not be an issue. I'm not interested in your wealth. You said yourself, price was based on what I find precious. There is nothing more precious to me than money. Your name, you know mine. What's yours? I have to be able to call you something. Hmm. Fake your death every century or so? Victor Ezra Harlan. Did you see that? See what, sir? I thought you changed your mind about going in. I was inside. I just arrived. Sir. Get me the hell out of here.
what is it you find so amusing? About time you were moving on. Burn this place to the ground, boy. Not yet. Now see, that's why I like you. You always do. I may have another for you soon. Well, I'd rather have her. Never. <laughs> never say never, Everhart. Month? Six weeks at the most. Seems my fate is in the hands of your friend. You saw him? Oh, yes. You didn't, uh. You know, you didn't. He inquired. If you said anything, I may have less time than you do. Who is this guy? The patient you were asking about is Marcus Pennington. He had a tumor, like yours. Inoperable, and it had metastasized. All right, Doc. Give it to me straight. What? No way! No way! You, no way! Ah. 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 They took him away. I assume he died. He showed up again. This time he seemed different. Hello? Hello, doctor? Yes, yeah, okay, I need to see the doctor. Doc, listen, I need a new round of tests. Hello? Marcus, I just Kiss, what can I do for you? You scared me. Listen, I need a new round of tests, doc. Marcus, we already ran tests. Yeah, I know, but I made a deal with the devil. Marcus, we did the MRI. Trust we run did the, the test, doc. Trust me. All right, come on back. <laughs> You're cured. I'm cured? <laughs> I'm cured! <laughs> I told you, Doc. I told you! The tumor had simply vanished without a trace. And he was dying to brag about it. He couldn't keep it in. But he should have. Nice looking girls there, Doc. Thank you. You want to know a secret? Yes. <laughs> no can do, Doc. He gets awful riled up if anybody says anything about him. Who? I have met my savior, and I am healed. Come on, Marcus, please. <laughs> All right. Well, was it a treatment, some kind of drug, radiation? He asked me what was most precious to me. Well, what's his name? He said anybody that figured out his real name didn't last too long. He knew mine, though. I didn't even have to tell him. Faithful Curiosities. It's this big warehouse full of all this creepy shit, ran by an even creepier guy. Had these... Bright eyes. Yeah, but what did he do to you? He didn't even touch me. And yet the very next day, here I am, plain as day, a walking miracle. <laughs> I should be dead right now, but I ain't. And what's even better, he says I ain't never gonna die. As long as I gave him whatever was everything to me. So what did you give him? There in mystery number one. Big pardon? It's a comic book, Doc. And it came out in 1940. I had found it at this little flea market. They just had it mixed in with all this other shit. They didn't even know what they had. I bought it for two bucks. It's worth over $80,000. So you traded a comic book for immortality. But not just any comic, Doc. This is Darren Mystery number one. The seed that planted Marvel. This is pre-Stan Lee stuff. And what's even better, it's in mint condition. Oh. Well, what would this guy want with a comic book? I asked myself the very same question. He's not really the comic book type. So I figured, what the hell? He'll never know the difference. What did you do, Marcus? <laughs> Last September, I picked up a bootleg copy at a con. You know, like a reader copy. Even that sent me back 250 bucks. Bootleg? Yeah, a fake. A good one. Kinda hated to get rid of that one, but... <laughs> so you gave him the fake? <laughs> he 
It's never gonna know the difference. That's one crazy story, Marcus. And I feel like a million bucks. If what you say is true, this guy could save lives and make me rich. He's not big on referrals. Alvita Zane. I ain't never gonna die. <laughs> I'll never forget that double negative. And sure enough, a week later, he was dead. His neighbors found him in his kitchen with a frozen scream on his face. They found his precious comic right next to him, covered in blood. Nobody realized what that comic was really worth. A part of me expected this phantom to show up at the funeral to claim it. Taken so abruptly from us, but still suddenly we recognize. They buried him with it. Bidding, don't you think? Nobody could put the pieces together. The Emmy, the cops, or even his friends and family. But I think I have. I think he defaulted on what turned out to be a secured loan of sorts. Marcus had no idea who he was dealing with. Everhart repossessed his life and gave the poor stupid bastard a one-way ticket straight to hell. All because of that counterfeit comic. Marcus cheated him and now he's burning for it. must have been terrifying. What did Marcus see and feel as that monster reached in and crushed his heart? The embalmer used every trick in the book to wipe the frozen screen from his lily white face, said it was like hammering a dent out of a car's fender for Christ's sake. And you led me right to his doorstep, didn't you? Well, I tried to warn you, but you and that pig hitman of yours were going to kill my kids. Stop looking over your shoulder, I didn't rack you out. What are you going to do? There's a lot of money on the table. For the love of God, call the police. If you don't, I will. You call a cop, they'll find you hanging from your kid's swing set. You can't cheat death. Maybe not, but Everhart can. Good night, Doc. Antonio, glad I caught you. How have you been feeling of late? Yeah. I've got a doctor I'd like you to go see, capiche? Dr. Gideon's gonna come down with a little case of lead poisoning. <gasps> we need to talk. How did you get in here? I've been here for some time. Or perhaps I was here. Please. Shh. Today, but a warning. Something exceedingly rare in my line of work. I hope you appreciate the courtesy. Don't tell me your name, please. Good. You learn quickly. But I think you know who I am. What do you want? Relax. It's not your time. I must say, I am both intrigued and puzzled by your profession. It's a naive, quaint enterprise. But you must know, you're merely postponing the inevitable. It's not merciful. It's cruel. I am the only true angel of mercy. I won't tell anyone about you. Should you call the police? Never. You're lying to me. From my children's eyes, I swear. What did you say? I promise. From my children's eyes. Stop saying that. From my children's eyes, I swear! You know not what you do, wagering such innocent bounty. And you said the words thrice. You vile bastard! Wait, listen to me. Silence yourself. You said it. I'm thus bound. 
Dungeon! I don't understand. On your children's eyes, I am forced to accept your foul offer, sir. Damn your soul if you're lying to me. Because if you are, I may very well be in the market for such precious, delightful little jewels. And perhaps I will gouge them out myself with a grapefruit spoon taken from your wife's silverware drawer. Don't, don't touch me, please. I see everything. Jesus Christ! And I'll be watching you very, very closely. There is but one seat next to me in a boat on the River Styx. It's a pity. Poor Marcus betrayed me. I was actually quite fond of him. You, on the other hand, I don't much care for. Imagine what I'd do. What I dug up. You see, I did return to claim it. Be faithful to our pact, Doctor. Good night. Say hello to the girls for me. on business. May I say who's calling, sir? You may not. I am sorry, sir. It's all right, Jameson. Let him in. So, may I take you a tea? I'll hang on to them. How did you find me? Does it matter? No, I suppose it really doesn't. Have you brought something for me or not? Perhaps. Perhaps. You intrigue me, Victor. You flatter me. Some tea, sir. It's Darjeeling. We have honey. Why are you really here? To negotiate. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? It's been a long time since anyone's called me that. And for you, a long time is a damned long time, isn't it? Salem. 1692. But let's get back to the subject of you. So, what is it you want? Everything. <laughs> what do you mean, everything? 
It could indeed refer to anything. The sum of human experience. History. It can often invoke the human condition in general. And it's what some order on a cheeseburger. I want everything. Old mayo. My empire is not a cheeseburger, Mr. Everhart. Call it a dowry. Most know not such wealth in a single lifetime. You will have centuries to replace it, and perhaps this time of your own accord, and not by inheritance, greed, or murder. Inheritance, my ass. If you're the genuine article, why don't you use your voodoo magic to conjure up some cash? What do you need me for? I have no interest in your vile fortune. My fortune wouldn't be so vile if it were yours, would it? You, sir, are the first man of such liberal means to ever approach me. I don't need your blood money and have all the time in the world. You, on the other hand, have exactly one month, three weeks, two days, and five minutes before you begin feeding worms in a dark six-foot hole just three leagues from here. The shady maple serves as sentinel atop a slight hill where you can forever gaze down upon your dead neighbors, the richest man in the graveyard. You even sent yourself flowers. But the stone, beloved philanthropist, you, sir, are neither. I've never spoken to anyone about that inscription. How do you know about that? You have everything well choreographed. Even your own funeral. I will send flowers. But forgive me, sir, if I do not attend. Everything? Everything. How will I live? You will live. That is the point. I keep nothing. These clothes on your back, consider them a gift with my compliments. How do I know you'll keep your end of the bargain? You don't. Don't do it, sir. Going once. I give you everything I own. And I live forever. It's very simple. I cannot take back anything I have freely given. You, on the other hand, cannot retrieve a single possession from this, your previous life. Going twice. I'll just get my coat. No coat. Does this mean that dinner is cancelled, sir? We were having fun of it. Shut up, Jameson. Don't worry, Elizabeth. You'll see him again soon, but under much different circumstances. You and I will meet again as well, I assure you. Do you pray, Mr. Everhart? Not as such. You should stop. Especially if you plan to see me again. Until then. I'm so sure that gentleman is 100%. You think? Why don't you go dust something? <gasps> Never look back. What are you gonna do, turn me into a pillar of salt? I find it amusing that you of all people have read that particular book. God is far more cruel than I. Debatable. Why not let me look back at my empire? The one you've just taken from me. This is a bargain, and you know it. However, it's not too late to reconsider. I 
I'm getting out of my heart. Where am I to go? Anywhere but here. Look only forward, away from here. And you shall never die. Death's behind you now. Death's behind you. Lady throw you out? Shut up, asshole. Hey! Hey, I don't have to take that kind of abuse. Who do you think you are? That's who I think I am. Oh. Uh, make that Mr. Asshole, and we've got a deal. Next stop, Mr. Trump. As far as you know, that's who I am. Okay? May I call you Donald? Just drive, Mr. Asshole. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Ross. I need to get into my box. It's four in the morning, Mr. Harland. Easy or hard, bank's gotta get opened. Wait here. With bated breath. This is the best fake passport you can get, Mr. Smith. Here's that international phone you wanted. Untraceable. Forget me, fish. You were never here, man. What the hell are you looking at? Drive, asshole, to the airport and step on it. Uh, that's Mr. Asshole. And hey, I got a terrible memory, too. Where's the love? favorite wine, Lieutenant. I'm supposed to say that I'm on duty. What's that? The most poignant of tales drip like honey from the 
pages of a dead man's diary. Really? I'll loan it to you if you like. I just got back from San Francisco. I once lived there. 1906, right? You know how sensitive I can be about my age. Masalino Barolo Perusi. It was on the top shelf of the boss's secret stash. How did you know? Are you friends with Steve? I am not. Fuck me in daffodils. That must mean it's really good. <laughs> La Bonagherita, Rovine, questo vino delizioso, caro amico mio. Vulgarity ruins the sweetness of the wine? What should we drink to? Why, life, of course. Have we met? For your sake, I certainly hope not. You have a very unique aura. It's green with blue edges and yellow spots, which means you're a wandering soul. You've been reincarnated many times. I'm guessing you're a Libra on the cusp of a Virgo. My sister's a cusp, but she's a Sagittarius. Anyway, when she was in middle school, she had this huge crush on Barry Mamelo. And then, boom, along came baby. <laughs> and the mom and dad, they were stumped on a name. And Mandy. That's my name. Can you give us a minute, please? It's not her time, but very soon. Stop sharing that shit with me. You should listen to these pearls I so carelessly drop. You're doing it again, aren't you? I've distinctly defined our boundaries. Well, go ahead and take off the gloves then. But remember what happened the last time you broke your own rules? People died, and it wasn't their time. Enough. I can tell you about the specials if you like. Or not. Your aura is purple. The hue of a corpse flower, Mandy. My favorite. Take it easy. Everything's cool, man. I'll get the white instead. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you know him? How about stiff number two? And the punchline is that this is his doctor. Do these remind you of your days in Frisco? Should I be expecting a fire or earthquake? Locust? Flood, maybe. Check, please. Oh, did I just say that out loud? Um, I'm gonna get you a check, I'll be right back. How about him? Terminal cancer, and he's vanished. And his doctor was, guess who? You're gonna love Victor Harlan. No, you're just showing off. Is there anything else I can get you? Like water, maybe? I've got copies, you know. Your oars, red. You weren't always like this? Not always. Who were you? I really couldn't say. I was in love once. Who was she? When you play games with people's lives, you become a part of them. You think I want the blood of children on my hands? We're not so different, you and I. Now we're getting into things that I don't want to talk about. Stay back! I mean, there's only one way out of here, and this ain't it. And who the fuck are you? I'm just here to help. Stop acting like you care, because you don't give a shit! I'm gonna put my gun down on the floor. Just relax. Why don't you say we grab a cold one from that cooler over there? Well, what about them? They want to shoot me so bad they can taste it. Please don't! I'm here to protect you. Yeah? And who's going to protect you? Put them down. 
I'll shoot you! Stay calm, kid. What about that deer? Just let her go. Drop it. Well, go ahead! Shoot! I'll take her with me! Nobody has to die tonight, son. I <laughs> can stop that now. I'm not your son. No way! The cylinder was empty. The ambulance is on its way. It's not hit. It's not his blood. What the hell? Oh, my. Please don't tell me. Shit. Everybody out. And you, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to arrest you. It's okay. I've got this. So we both have blood on our hands. It should comfort you to know that we feel somewhat the same about it. I'm nothing like you. I've got blood on my hands, but you're swimming in it. What am I supposed to do? Pray. Maybe I'll listen to you. Is he okay? He's a lot of things, but okay isn't one of them. Maybe you should see a doctor. Get yourself a checkup. Do you know a good doctor? Not offhand. driver I just bought this shirt He'll lawyer up so fast, he'll be back on his plane before Warner comes in. Hey, Jack. The DA will stick him on the next flight himself. Wait a minute. Yeah? Give me a background on a Harry Winters, retired cop, one of ours, and his daughter. 
Isabel. You got something? Keep this quiet. You're the detective. Lady, what are you up to? shit that's killing me, you know. It's not shit. Huh. See? I'm dirty. I think it came from somebody's bedpan. Miss Winters, there's a man in the lobby to see you. Thank you. Can I get some Japanese food up here? I can't, hun. I'm sorry. He's not supposed to have that stuff. But I could turn my head for an hour if you were to sneak some in. Oh, you're an angel. That I am. I'll be back in a flash. Egg rolls and rangoons. Nothing fried. Don't push your luck, Harry. Winters. Dr. Gideon, why homicide? I heard he had a heart attack. So you think Harlan killed his own doctor and went off the grid? I think the events are connected somehow. You know who murdered Gideon. Why do you think that I know the identity of your alleged serial killer? Because you don't look like a total idiot to me. Well, I wish the newspapers agreed with you. How many heart attacks have you seen where there's blood on the walls? Boy, some dinner conversation, you and Harry. My dad was a beat cop for 35 years, not a detective or anything special like you. <sighs> you probably didn't even notice him. I'm sorry, I didn't know it. Relax. I take it you're not a fan of the department. Since I was little, we talk about cases all the time. I'm not at liberty to discuss this with you in detail, Miss Winters. The paper said Harlan was a made man, even hands-on when it came to enforcement, which in layman's terms means killing people. Then he sued them for libel and what? Gangsters don't make murder look like a heart attack. It's not their style. The crime scenes were discovered right after the 911 calls from each of the victims. And they weren't complaining of chest pains. That did not end up in the papers. Pass the mashed potatoes, Daddy. Perry hates these. No spork. <laughs> you're reaching and you're digging too. Why? I'm hungry. And I'm serious. Okay. Now I want to know what you're covering up. Obstruction of justice, suppressing evidence, is that what you think of me, really? And all on our first date? This one's for you. Be careful jumping to wrong conclusion. Conclusion may jump on you. <sighs> I think you're a good cop. Do you really want my opinion? Sure. He won't admit it, but my dad, I think, was protecting someone bad. It cost him his badge and ruined his life. I think you're caught up in it, too. 
Be careful. Do the right thing. Find him. Stop him. Hey. I hope Harry gets better. How's the business, Sammy? Silva, I don't know nothing and I ain't seen nobody. I ain't asked you anything yet, man. And when you do, I still won't know nothing. Get out of the car. Let's see what you got in your pockets. I ain't got nothing, man, and you ain't got no warrant. Ever needed one before? Go ahead and search me, motherfucker. Damn. <laughs> that ain't enough. What, the price has gone up? Ain't got enough on you, man, not for this guy. He scares you. No. Well, who then? Somebody else. Tall, dark, and gruesome? Look, if you had any brains, he'd freak you too. Reapy bastard. He knew Harlan would be here even before I did. Victor Harlan. Shit, I ain't telling you nothing you don't already know. So this creepy bastard freaks you out, but yet you will climb a 60-story building and jump off of it for thrills. Yeah, hey, that's called base jumping. That's evidence of a crime, you know? I trust you, amigo. Are you gonna give me anything today or what? Yeah. Always pack your own shoot. Thanks for nothing. Hey, I'll be in my office if you need me. I've got my eye on you, Sammy. And I still won't know nothing. Damn. Yo, D! If you see that guy, I didn't tell you nothing, man, because I didn't, right? Stay out of trouble, Sammy. Shit! I didn't tell you nothing! Shit! Can I help you with your back, son? Nobody touches the back. Where to, Governor? Just drive. I'll tell you where to turn. Best.
Persian books. It's time to go in now. Finish this later, all right? Did you do it? Yes. They're just kids. I need you to please calm down. Now I know what you meant about the children. Sorry, Spencer. I have a plane to catch. Even for you, this is twisted shit. Don't bother to explain because it will only further upset you. Fuck you! Feel better? We should think about this. Lieutenant Spencer De Silva, I'm looking for one of your passengers. His name, Dahl Everhart. Yes, Lieutenant. That passenger is indeed booked on Virgin Atlantic Flight 614 to Heathrow Airport. Departed with Mr. Everhart, checked in and on board over two hours ago. That's fucking impossible. I just hung up with the man. Sir, please don't say fuck. Perhaps he was speaking to you from his mobile cellular phone. The headcount by a flight attendant put him in his seat at 3.12 p.m. May I suggest you contact the British authorities? Damn! Ah! Son of a... I can't believe this! Ah! Boy! Boy! I know it's you! I know it's you! You son of a bitch! I can't believe you saw him! Been in the fabric of time and space! If I can! Son of a bitch! What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm really not at liberty to discuss the details with you, Lieutenant! This isn't a game, Isabel. You don't know what you're dealing with. Why did you do to leave me alone? Is this about Harry? Harry doesn't even know I'm here. How do you know about Everhart? That's none of your business! It's my only business with you, and I want answers now. The morphine drip makes Harry talk in his sleep, okay? Well, if his dreams are about Everhart, they've got to be nightmares. No, he can help. If you truly knew what you were dealing with, you'd know how insane that sounds. Wait! Oh. Why are you involved with the Victor Harlan case? I have my reasons. How do you know either of them? Sammy the fence used to rat out customers to death. Funny, he never told me shit. You don't have the tits for it. Cross his path, and you're lucky if you simply end up dead. That man is not human. Then what is he then? He can't help you, Isabel. And when he tries, it goes terribly wrong. If you'd seen what I did today... You've protected him and people have died. He's not the one that I'm protecting and you know it. How are you helping him? By looking the other way? You call this protecting us? No. And thank you for helping me see how wrong I was. What the hell are you doing? Protecting you. What do you want? Delivery for you, sir. Sure you got the right place? I'm not expecting any deliveries. Quite sure, sir. Number 64, Kensington Palace Gardens, London, W8. Beautiful estate, sir, if I may say so. Who are they from? Apparently a secret admirer. I have no admirers. Take them back. 
us. No way. Well, it have to be. Wait a minute. Give me those. I appreciate the sentiment, Elizabeth, but sloppy, very sloppy. How could you let her go, Schilling? You know the rules? 24 hours. We can't charge her with anything. We've got to cut her loose. Tampering with suspects not sexy enough for you? The DA himself made the call. Jack said you were closing the case. Well, I changed my mind. What's your beef with me, De Silva? Don't blame me. I just work here. Any news from Interpol or MI6 on Harlan? Zip. Send some guys downtown to lean on Sammy. I'm sick of him selling fake passports to my perps. You didn't hear? Now what? They found Sammy on the roof of his building. What are you talking about? Massive heart attack. Must have been scared of heights. Sammy wasn't afraid of heights, Jack. What about Harlan's bodyguard? The girl with a double D Glock 9? The FBI had a tail on her, but she gave him the slip. And uh, speaking of the FBI... Oh, Jesus. Don't get like you get. Now, you know that Winters girl? I'm listening. Guess who came within three weeks of graduating from agent training at the FBI Washington Field Academy? Top of her class, too. You're shitting me. Seems she quit when her dad got sick. What about Everhart? You're not gonna like it. Come on, Jack, don't piss me off. He never arrived. I said you wouldn't like it. He got on the damn plane. The crew said that he boarded the plane. But somewhere over the Atlantic, he pulled a vanishing act. Thanks, Jack. Never felt better in my life. The tumor? Benign. You're a lucky man. I don't believe in luck. Luck is for losers. Everhart only got a fraction of my fortune thanks to you, my dear. He returned it. What's that you say? A single wire transfer to your Swiss bank account. He, he really didn't want my money. No matter. I have something for you, my dear. I trust this will assure your continued silent discretion. Thank you for the roses, by the way. I didn't send you roses. What? Who else knows you here? Your talents have been invaluable, Elizabeth, but it's getting late. You've got a plane to catch. Will I see you again, sir? I believe it's time our relationship ran its course. Your side arm. Of course, I forgot. This could tell tales that I wouldn't want told. Best to retire. Good luck, sir. Farewell, then. Dove la porto, signorina? Alla porta di Itro, in fretta. Al sul servizio. Driver. Sì. Sì.
Don't look back, Lisbeth. Death is behind, behind you now. I love that you quote me, Victor. Who the hell do you think you are? One who sends roses to a dear, lost, and dying friend. You sent them. I promised to send flowers to your funeral. Our contract is null and void. You believe I've given you something. Amusing but misguided. Your Damon Copperfield shit doesn't impress me anymore. Nobody gets me. I gave you nothing. Gave me immortality, friend. Don't sell yourself short. Did I? Oh, I really shouldn't let Lisbeth do you. She really wanted to. <gasps> oh. She's quite safe at the moment. No thanks to you. What do you know about that? Please. By all means, help yourself. Only $4,000 a bottle. A gift from Giuliani. Thank you. One of my true weaknesses. This is your empathy for people who have outlived their purpose in life. Wait a minute. Perhaps fate will lend a hand to poor Elizabeth. I'm not giving it back. You can't take it. What? You know what? That. But I gave you nothing. I keep telling you that. You know, if you beg my forgiveness, I might just let you walk out of here. I've never fully explained my... I wish to use your terminology. Oh, yes. My business model. Tried to explain it to your doctor. You whacked Gideon? That's just brilliant. You just saved me 20 grand. Everything is a lot to take in all at once. Mother of God! I dabble in humanity. Call it a hobby if you like. I gave you nothing. So, our arrangement, as you say, is null and void. It never existed. I don't give life. Take it. And here we are. What time? He's on my side today. I have no heart left, but you never had one to begin with. I need four minutes, please. I'll give you eternity. Tutto bene, signorina. He can't see me, Elizabeth. And remember, Victor has your gun. Sì, tutto bene. Ancora quanto manca al quarto? Circa 45 minuti. Trust me and listen. Notice anything out of place with your driver, besides that bullet on the floor. Why should I? I hired him myself. That's what Victor wants you to think. Look closer. Illuminati. You're getting sloppy. And I realize this isn't your country. But we passed the last exit to the airport miles back. 
Your loyalty to Victor has blinded you. I can handle this. I know what's going to happen in three and a half minutes. You belong to me now. Not yet, I don't know. You're already dead. Victor's killed you. Shut <laughs> How amusing. You loved him. I said shut up. That is what distracts you. Love always does. Believe me, it won't happen again. You have a piece? I'm not even here. I'm busy killing your boss at the moment. Ex boss. Three minutes. What would you give to live forever? There's a shitload of cash in this life that I don't want. Which makes it absolutely useless to me. Try again. And this time, please, offer something you truly care about. I have skills. Told you I had it. Of course you did. You gonna warn me next time you pull a stunt like that? I believe that I did. I even counted it down for you. Four, three, two. Are you always gonna be like this? Payment for future services rendered. And he pays me with my own money. I plan to reorganize my business. You'll play a vital role in that process. Do you understand? I'm not scared of you. And I can be a real bitch. Do you understand? I'm counting on it. What if I decide later that this isn't working out for me? You can check out. But you can never leave. Nobody gets me. The Angel of Death is an Eagles fan. How are we supposed to get out of here? Did it again. What? Sorry, miss. Didn't see you there. Do you need a lift? <laughs> Fix the tire and beat it. Goodbye, Mr. Everhart. Now that's just rude. Put that away. You're gonna hurt yourself. The devil looks down on you from hell and laughs! You lack imagination, and it's always the same. Especially with you shallow fools with deep pockets. If 
not my time. My watch seems to have stopped. No, no, we can make, we can make a new deal. Tick tock, the grave calls, and death waits for no man. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I've seen the way you look at her. I, I, I'll save her. I'll give her to you as a plaything. She's not yours to give. Oh, tell me, please. <laughs> You know what you're gonna need where you're going? No. Luck. So you finally come. Yes. Did you ever find that sense of humor? Jack Benny meets the Grim Reaper in a dark alley. Death demands your money or your life. After a long, long silence, death rattles his scythe impatiently. And insists Jack answer. What is Jack's reply? I'm thinking it over. <laughs> what do you think? It needs work. It's been a long time, Harry. I've been waiting for you. I'm ready. Are you so certain? I have to let her go. So you think that's what she wants? What do you care? Just get it over with. You lost everything because of me, didn't you? Always looking the other way. Yet following so very closely all those years, like some stray hunting dog lost in the chase. Why, Harry? To 
protect those who weren't on your list. And now you beg to be on that very list. Only now do I understand what you really are. I never thought I'd say this. I am really happy to see you, doll. Your company. Hey, hey yourself. Oh. The priest was here this morning trying to convince me to let go. But it's what Harry would want. I'm sorry. For losing my dad. Or for arresting me. Them both. It's all so stupid. It's so selfish. Why? Because I would do anything to save Harry, and you know, after all this, I don't even know if it's what he would want. I don't believe that, and neither do you. Harry's not ready to go, not yet. He just talks tough. You don't even know him. I just spent the last seven hours down at the precinct going over cold case files, Harry's friends. Talk about having to read between the lines, but it was a story that I was very familiar with. So you were right about him. And you were right about me. We have been chasing the same ghost. And it's time that both of us let him go. Can you? I already have. Why is he giving up? Because he thinks that if he lets you go, then you'll finish what you started. So what now? I have something for you. There's something from the boys in Washington and from me. It's better than diamonds any day. You earned it. So, why don't you go home, get a few hours sleep? I'll stay here with Harry. Are you sure? Yeah, tomorrow's a new day, right? Who knows? Thank you for everything.
We have company. Now how can that be? You didn't see this coming? Please. I'm Isabel. Welcome, Isabel. You have nothing to fear of me, I assure you. You seem very familiar. October of the year of your bicentennial, United States of America, 1976 was one of the days in which you passed. Some of us live many lives. What can I do for you? My father's sick. The doctors can't do anything for him. It's not his time. I know who you are. Please don't take my father. Let's pretend for the sake of discourse that I am who or what you think that I am, if I were indeed such a man. One of such magnificent supernatural capabilities and profound spiritual talent would no doubt answer to much higher power. I, he, would therefore be exceedingly remiss in his duties allowing doomed souls such as your father to wander the earth long beyond the limits of fate, the heavens, and the laws of nature. It's all a very risky business. So very many things can go tragically wrong in these situations and believe me, they usually do. Once the wheel in the sky begins to turn, it cannot be stopped. Not even by me. All of this hypothetically speaking, of course. Don't. What is this? An insignificant trinket. But everything to you. Not the trinket. The man who earned it. And what does Harry want? What do you care? He's the one doing the dying today. He believes that his departure will make you happy. That you'll be better off after he's gone. Of course you know that, don't you? His bags are packed. And despite what you may think, it is his time. May I have your answer, Mr. Emerson? Surely you understand the risk you're taking by coming here. I can't be trusted. I have no choice. Your answer, please. I find myself in need of a reliable timepiece. I release you both. Thank you. Gift of time, what gift of more time? Farewell. Who did you actually set free? It is I. 
was finally free. Profound spiritual talents. <laughs> Develop an ego, my love. Developing a death wish, my dear. I couldn't have said it better. Feels good to be alive, doesn't it? Keep the gloves on. For now. I'd like a little more time here, if you don't mind. I thought I might find you here. How's Dad? He's gonna be okay. But something tells me you already know that. Harry came out of the coma a few hours ago. I thought you might have traded your soul for him. I would have, you know. But he settled for the gold watch. What's that? Diary of a dead man. Doll. I told you that I have been in love once, and it is that very love that has that made me what I have become. I promise I will one day see you on the other side. Caro amigo mio. My dear friend. I don't remember any of it. But I know it to be true. It must have been some watch. A gift of time for the gift of more time. What did you say?
Mr. Leach. I never told you my name. Tell me, huh? Why am I here? Don't do that. I'm told you have the gift. And you hold certain keys. It is no gift, and you fear the lock when you should fear the keys. I have no fear. Why should I barter with a hollow, wretched soul such as yours? It would take everything, everything that you hold dear. But as there is nothing, nor anyone, that you truly care about, you come before me with little to bargain. I'm offering my first payment. Not interested. Teach me. I'll be your apprentice. Please give my gift a purpose beyond the fact that it's just fun. <laughs> now, I wouldn't demean the privilege of bestowing the gift of death, the ceremony. When the eyes roll back and the light goes out like a candle, when you take someone's life a full lifetime, False dead to the cold ground, cut like the strings of a marionette. It's magnificent. Take this. What is it? Keep it close to your heart. My heart? You do have one, black as it may be. Feel the minute hand. You can't see it move with the naked eye. But you feel it. <laughs> Visualize the hour hand in your mind's eye. It's no longer frozen in place, is it? In fact, from your perspective, it spins out of control. Immortals care not for the living. It hurts too much. What did you do? That's me. Isn't it? As long as the watch ticks, I tick. Hell is closed for business, and God is becoming increasingly impatient with me as I take this time for myself. The deal is done, and you are forever bound to it. You too are bound. I'll make the devil proud. Say hello for me, Mr. Leech. Was it down there? Fucking hot, man. What do you think? I need you to please take a message downstairs. Keep it short. I don't have anything to write. Any vacancies? The boss has a room specially designed for him. An electric testicle vice. <laughs> <laughs> See, he gets a proper reception. Can I just stay up here in the AC just a little bit longer? I'm sorry. I understand. Oh! Hitler says hi. Hell joke. <laughs> Later. <laughs> uh.